William Tichawana and um, basically uh, that's me. Um, so um, from if I may be to talk about the like the academic journey, obviously each and every one of us starts from the uh, lower school primary, which I'm not going to dwell much on that one. Then from there you go to to secondary. So one of the things I think that um, if I'm to then talk about my academic journey, um, I knew what exactly I wanted when I was too young. I knew that I wanted to do scientists. Maybe it's because I was exposed. So what they say sometimes, they say exposure matters most. So I was surrounded with people who were doing sciences. So at first I wanted to become a medical doctor. So along the way, I knew exactly that I'm, I'm supposed to be good in terms of mathematics, in terms of uh, sciences. So my focus started, um, or my journey started there. So long back, I was very good in terms of mathematics. I loved mathematics because of I, I knew that what I wanted to do to become a medical doctor. Then from there, so I did my, my, my sciences up to, um, to advanced level where I come from the quite advanced level. Then I was doing mathematics. I, I did mathematics, biology, and agricultural science. Then it was from that uh, conversation, I also did another, um, you know, those guidance, where you go to career guidance and so forth. It was from that background when I realized that, you no, know, in terms of the med um, in, in medical, to become a medical doctor, there are certain things in terms of uh, I was supposed to have done chemistry and so forth. So I said, okay, um, after speaking to one of my one of my mentors, which is one thing that I think is also very important to have a mentor, so he told me that obviously you realize that the world is going towards um, technology. So even those who are medical doctors, they need for those um, beat scans for those cancer machines and so forth. They are now um, depending much in terms of technology. So. That's where I started to see the vision to then say, okay, let me do um, uh, computer science. So from there, it means I then enrolled in, uh, to do a program in computer science. So um, I started my computer science uh, program in 20, 2007 up to 2011, and it, is, uh, it was now up to honors level. Then from 2011, uh, I took a, a, a gap year because sometimes, you know, when you are just learning, 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 you don't understand why you are doing certain things. So what I ended up doing is I ended up, then I took a gap year from 2011 to 20, 2015, I was working in the industry. So I ended up uh, engaging, meeting different technologies, in, uh, te testing uh, those technologies and so forth. From th that part, I then realized, okay, because if you are talking about technology, computer science, it's a broad, it's a broad term. I realized that, okay, um, because I was also following trains, I always love to, to read, to update myself. I realized that data science is the way to go. That was in 20, 2015. Obviously, a lot of people, they did not see that that way. But because, like what I, I told you, I had mentors who had, um, were also exposed to the European, uh, European world, and obviously, since I was also, I grew in the rural areas, and one of my grandfathers, he is one of my mentors, if I can tell you, so he is one person who motivated me because he had that exposure to outside world, and whilst we were growing in the rural areas, uh, my passion for science is like what I told you, when I was heading kettles and so forth, counting, um, counting kids and goats, when I arrived home, he would ask me how many kettles, how many goats. So it was from that part when I ended up also linking, when you are being asked now X plus Y, for me I would convert certain things to then say X is representing cows, Y is representing goats. So if I'm saying goats plus, uh, plus, uh, plus kettles, obviously the answer that I get is goats plus, plus kettles. So mathematics became very easy for me in terms of that part because I was substituting the letters with things that I things that I know. So I further went to then do computer science, like what I told you. Then masters, I then came to do my masters. Twenty started twenty fifteen at University of um, Fortier in South Africa. I started um, June that was July twenty fifteen. 
then by July 2016, I was done in terms of, so it was almost a one year. So one thing that I realized with science is, is you need to invest your, you need to invest your time. So like what they say, you reap what you, you sow, like in terms of planting, not what you used your eyes to see, right? So they say you reap what you sow, not what you, you sow. So I invested much of my time because I realized that, yes, obviously I had two years to do masters, but um, it was possible because I've seen that others have managed to do it in one year. So obviously I was sleeping in the labs sometimes. Obviously during weekends I was going there to the lab to do those other, other things. So by 2016, uh, where my course ended up in 2016 uh, December, then I graduated in 2017 because I was that now following the university policy that you also need to take um, that part. Then in 2017, what I then did is I also took another gap year. I said, okay, now that I did, um, I did um, using data mining techniques for the prediction of student dropouts. Well, that's one thing that I love about sciences. I want to be to use sciences to address a real life problem. So the system or my research that I did on masters was to address student dropouts using the data, the existing data, the data that exists in the student data um, in the university database to predict or to um, foresee certain things before they do happen. Then we send those um, that information to other other departments so that they then check that part. So. 2017 to 2018, I took a gap year, whilst I also went back to, to Zimbabwe. Then from there, I was um, in a level advanced. Um, I was teaching computer science. I also believe in giving back to the community because I believe if I'm to die today, right, the knowledge that I've acquired, it's useless mm -hmm. if it does not change someone's future. And like what I told you, I come from the rural areas. And I realized some of the challenges that our students in the rural areas face. So most of the time, I will go back to the rural areas. I start teaching them mathematics, sciences, and um, also computer science, telling them wherever I get a platform to share with them like my, my, my journey. And I'm proud, uh, especially that background. A lot of people, they want to hide it. I've, uh, I, I always tell my, those students that I teach sometimes, to then say I do have a, a strong uh, an SRB which refers to a strong rural background. Mm. Those principles, uh, the rural background principles, they are the ones that are driving me or to uh, to make me to inspire me to do more and be more. Mm. Then uh, from there in 2018, I then realized okay, let me go back now to do my my PhD. So 2018, 2019, um, in 2020. Um, beginning of 2020, I was done. So it was almost two years, two, two and a half years. Uh, the good thing that um, I managed to, you know, when I was using Twitter, others, I know that when they're using Twitter or social media platforms, they use them for other things. But for me, I use social media platforms to get opportunities. So it was from social media platform like Twitter, when I ended up, uh, I ended up getting, um, um, there was an advertisement that was there to then say, if you want, you can apply to become a, for, a, for a Dora Plus scholarship. So I applied for that scholarship and um, others, they say luck, I don't believe in luck. Personally, I use stubborn faith, number one. I'm a believer, I don't doubt that. So I applied and I also prayed, right? Then I got that uh, scholarship, um, then I was given that scholarship for my PhD so I ended up doing an exchange program. I ended up going to the uh, University of Tartu, that is in Estonia, which is Europe, where I spent some, some time doing part of, my, part of my PhD, even though I was fully registered with the University of Fortier, then I ended up doing that part, uh, that part uh, of my PhD. So my focus when I was now doing um, a PhD, I realized that um, we are talking about things, right, uh, each and every time, gadgets and so forth. So I started uh, reading how, where is this data coming from? From my masters, right? Where is this data coming from? We realized that we do have a lot of sensors that we're using, be it our watches, be it everything. 
the things that they are now t uh, calling Internet of Things. So it was from that part, I took another component of that from my master's, Internet of Things, that big data. Then uh, the, we are also talking about cloud computing, right, whereby this information is going to be stored somewhere. But we realized that in the next coming years, or um, when I was reading, we, we realized that uh, other scholars are now talking about fog computing, which is an intermediator between cloud computing and these Internet of Things devices. So we realize that when you are sending most of these things, is be it dialysis machine, they send information or they want information to be processed in real time. So sending that information to the cloud, if the devices become many, if you are sending that information, there's going to be congestion, right? So they've started to create something that is called a uh, fog computing. So my part of my, my research for PhD is all to do with networking and how these devices can be used to monitor real life things or to save lives and at the same time uh, addressing the element of um, congestion which we sometimes others they call it latins right if you have to put it in the scientific uh, terms when you're sending information to the cloud um, when you for it to go to be processed in the cloud then comes back sometimes there can be those delays and those delays especially when you're dealing with life machines that can be uh, dangerous so um, they've introduced for computing so i was now um, for my phd i was looking at how can we use for computing to process a real life uh, real time uh, um, things that need to be processed mm -hmm. so they can be processed, processed to the for computing which is closer to the iot devices then those that requires more computational power they can be processed on the cloud then um, they can then be sent uh, down back to the to the thing. So basically, that's my my academic my academic journey. Mm -hmm. And like what I told you, um, being in a, um, in that academic journey, I also and having the industrial uh, uh, knowledge and part mm -hmm. that I also did part of the industry. I re later realized that okay, um, for me, uh, if I'm to go there out there. I, one person would believe that, like what I told you, to then say, I want to give back to the community. So I said, well, what is the best way to do that? That's how I ended up jo joining the, the academic part. Then say, okay, I want to change someone's life. From where I'm coming from, others, they think that it's not possible. So that's where I ended up uh, getting to the academic part. And the students that I teach, in most cases, I don't want only to teach the mind. I also want to teach the heart. I also want to inspire. So when I'm the lecture, in the lecture hall, it gives me the, that platform to also kind of preach, right? Mm -hmm. Not preaching the, the gospel of Jesus, but preaching the gospel of hope. Because many of our students, many of our youth, I believe some of them, they, come, they do have the same background of where I'm coming from. And one thing that I always sell to them, be it wherever I get a platform, I sell to them the thing that I call hope. So hope is the only thing that you need, and here and there get exposure, and it will help you. Um, one thing that drives everyone to do something, it is supposed to be passion and your, and your vision. So um, obviously, if I'm to go turn back the ends of time and then say, can I be a medical doctor? with the things that have been exposed to right now, obviously I'm going to choose computer science. Um, obviously, um, like what I told you, um, here and there I also work with those who are in the medical field and they come to us to then say, I do have this data, I want this data to be analyzed. We're talking about uh, data analytics and so forth. So um, I do appreciate them. I do appreciate being a medical doctor but at the same time, I'm realizing that with the power that I do have with, now with computer science, I can even go if I want to blend. I have done some several um, health courses just in jail to just mix how then can I use computers in this medical, in this medical field. So obviously, um, each and every one who is doing any, any, any subject that they are doing, obviously at the end of the day, you realize that we converge somewhere. But with computer science, um, what I can tell you is it is cutting across all, 
or all subjects, be it someone who's doing social sciences, someone who's doing medical doctor, um, medical sciences, and so forth. So, for me, um, apart from um, the money part, computer science helps me to uh, link with anyone because anyone or everyone can come to me. They say we do have this problem that we want you to help us. So. Uh, Okay, uh, obviously I'm going to remain a computer scientist and uh, the medical part, I still have the, a, a passion about it and I want to do, um, maybe to continuously also work with them in terms of using computer science to change people's life, the dialysis machine that you are talking about, uh, the, those who are doing computer science can also help and with the coming in of artificial intelligence and so forth, we are working hand in hand with those in the medical medical field. So any any area is good for for anyone to do. What as long as you do have passion for that for that field. So as of now, going forward, I think I'm now having more passion in computer science. Okay. Uh, I think one one thing that we need to liberate ourselves from is the idea of um, after I'm done, I want to go and work. Mm -hmm. uh, when I whenever I'm given a platform. To um, you know, you are getting these skills that you are going to get. Obviously, it's a fact that um, if you are to check in terms of how many people are being um, are graduating. So, whenever you are going to do your program, before you think of going to uh, get employed, whilst you are still doing your program, remember we teach you how to install Bit, Microsoft Word, how to format the, the basics. From that point, I always tell even my students that you can start your own business. It is from that background, if you liberate your, your, your mindset to then say, I can start my own things. With this BSc, getting employment should be just an, uh, an additional or an extra. But with the skills that you've acquired, you know you, you are being taught how to um, pro do programming. And there are a lot of uh, problems that are out there that now requires those skills that you do have. And one um, opportunity that I always tell people, whenever you see a queue, right, it means there's an opportunity for you to make money, to employ yourself. So you simply need to go there, you ask them what's the problem, then you create an application that solves that, uh, that idea, that, that, that problem. So yes, um, there, apart from, from, from creating your own, your own work, you're making your own money, Apart from that, there are a lot of um, opportunities out there. It, uh, like what I said, you need to be driven by passion. What is it that you are doing? Because one of the problems that we have come to realize is we are creating a generation that simply wants to have uh, a qualification. If you ask them, why are you doing that? They are saying, no, I'm just doing it because my father said I'm supposed to do it and so forth. And with technology now or with sciences you need to have these hands-on skills with you so when you go out to them uh, like what I, we, we told you are talking about the com coming in of the fourth industrial revolution and people are saying computers are going to substitute human beings uh, so someone who's doing computer science is he going to be substituted there are two answers personally i say yes computers are going to substitute people but they're going to substitute people who don't have the skills, right? So you need to continuously upgrade yourself with the coming in of technology. It means also there is a lot of work that is going to also be created. Because if you are to talk about the fourth industrial revolution, uh, the first, the second one, the third one, um, there is a view that um, with the coming in of technology, a lot of imp uh, jobs were also created. Remember, there were no typists long back. There were no those who are going to print, right? But with the coming in of technology, it means those jobs were also created. So the jobs are going to be created more, but they're going to be created to those who do have technological skills. So with your BSc, what you simply need to do is, now and again, you need to perfect your, your skills because the technology that we're using now, tomorrow is going to change. So if you don't change or if you don't move with the technology, you are going to remain with your certificate Personally, like what I told you, we did, um, when I was doing first year, we did C, programming language. But now we are talking about Python and so forth. So if I was just going to say I do have a certificate with C programming language, 
was I going to um, be relevant to the market today when we are talking about um, data analytics, uh, Python, and those other programming languages? No. So we constantly, you need to upgrade your, yourself. That's the effect. Even those who are doing other programs, if they don't upgrade, upgrade themselves, they are going to remain with a degree without, uh, without the, 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 uh, the, the skills that are needed. So, yes, you, the qualification, that's the first step from the rural areas, like what I told you, but you need also to uh, invest in yourself now and again. And opportunities, if I tell you, opportunities there are many. Sometimes um, with the, I think uh, the COVID-19 acted as a, um, as a catalyst. Whilst you are here in South Africa, you can work in America, you can work in, in, in any other country if you do have those technological skills. So I think with the BSc in computer science, you do have an upper hand. It's now how you are using it to your advantage. Um, number one, um, it also does to have with uh, passion, like what we said. In terms of, in, in, in actual fact, learning is not, uh, is not um, something that you just say, I'm just doing it. You need to have passion from within. So, but I realized the more you go up the ladder, the more there are also if more opportunities for you, right? So, from my side, um, I always advise, even if you, are not, you don't want to be an academic, right? The more you, 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 you keep on studying, not just for master's, PhD, and so forth, it also helps you to see life differently. So the learning part, apart from giving you more money, it also helps you to see life differently. So you realize, I always tell people that someone who just did, um, did up to mid grade two, and someone who did up to grade, level, uh, grade um, matric, and someone who did a degree, when we are engaging, the level of understanding is a little bit different already. Right. So the more you go up the ladder, it helps the way you see things. So obviously, um, since I enjoy certain benefits where I am in terms of um, advancing in terms of education, definitely I would advise someone to do a postgraduate, a master's, PhD, as long as you know why you are doing those things. Because if you do them without knowing what, why you are doing those ones, as good as you are wasting resources and you are also wasting time. I always tell people that um, the only person who can stop you from what you want to become in life is you. So um, it is up to you to, I know a lot of people, they now want to use an excuse to then say, I'm coming from the rural areas. But I was there, right? I'm here. And I always know that where you come from matters less than where you're going. That's why even when you are, I always give an example of a car, right? There's that rear mirror and that the windscreen. The rear mirror is just a small one. It helps us to see certain things from the behind, but the bigger picture, where are you going? So obviously in everything that you are doing, know that you need to do a commitment. And um, I don't want to, I'm not attacking them, but uh, I think some of the churches of today and pastors of today say, no, I'm going to pray for you. After praying, they don't tell you that you don't need to go and just sleep because you are creating lazy Christians who just think that if the Papa is going to pray for me, then I go and sleep. That's why sometimes. So at the end of the day, you need also an element of commitment, hard work, and have a vision. You need to draw your five-year plan and you need to be disciplined enough to then say each and every t time you need to tick whether you have um, achieved certain things. It's not a matter of achieving everything at once, but those small, 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 um, sm uh, small gains, they help um, you to do, to do certain things. And maybe in closing, if I'm to quote uh, Martin Luther King, uh, Junior is one person who inspires me a lot. He says, if you're crawling, you are supposed to keep on crawling. Mm -hmm. If you're running, keep on running. If you're um, walking, keep on walking. If you're flying, keep on flying. But at the end of the day, the thing that is just simply telling us is, 
you need to keep on to keep on moving because those small steps they'll help you what matters is the right direction it's not the matter of speed but 